What's up guys? Today on this episode of Resto Car, we are gonna make wheel cribs. Let me show you what those are. So here is what I mean when I say wheel crib. You can buy these, Race Ramps has plastic ones that do the same thing, but these wheel cribs will get your car up off the ground so that you can actually get underneath of it. And it's a good idea to use them to uh, keep it up off the ground in high humidity areas. Um, keep the rust from underneath. So if you're storing your car for the winter, it's a good idea to get it up off the ground, off the concrete. So you can build these wheel cribs to be as high as you need them to be. You can build them so that you can stack them to get different heights. And if you want to get uh, a little creative too, you can even make sure that your jack stands fit on them like I did here so that I can, you know, I, again, get them up off the ground. In this case, I needed to work on the wheel wells and I had to take the tires off and I needed to get underneath and everything because I was um, cutting, out, cutting out the seatbelt humps. So basically this worked out great. I was able to put jack stands on top of these wheel cribs and then take the wheels off, do what I need to do and leave it there. And now the car is ready to go back on top of the wheel cribs. I just haven't gotten that far. These wheel cribs are 12 inches high to, to this point here. And they are 14 inches long from this side to this side. That's how I built these ones. And I came up with those measurements. Uh, the height, I just sort of uh, said a foot up off the ground would be good. You know, you get too high. It can be difficult to jack the car up to a height taller than 12 inches. It's not impossible. Um, but when you're trying to get your tires up that high, you gotta get creative with the jack. Um, here is a tip that with the screws, um, if you do not pre-drill, the screws closer to the end may split the ends, as you can see here. And I didn't realize this at first, but I did catch on to it. And then I pre-drilled every one moving forward after this close to the edge. And you can see here that it turned out much better for these ones. So let's talk about what we are building today. So these wheel cribs here are 12 inches to this point, And we are going to use that same measurement today. It's 14 inches from here to here. And these are 12 inches from here to here. The one we are building today is going to be 10 inches from here to here. And that will accommodate, you know, a 10 inch tire. All right, so in order to figure out how wide to make your wheel cribs, you basically get a tape measure and measure the width of your tire. So the front on this car is seven inches, you know, tread. And then on the back, I have about nine inches or so. Um, so again, with this car, with these, cribs, I went 12 inches. For the wheel crib that I'm going to be building today to show you guys how to do it, I'm gonna go 10 inches wide, which you know would work for this car, plus you know daily drivers and all that kind of stuff. All right, so a couple tips. First, planning stage is measure the width of your wheel, your tire, figure out how wide to make it, then determine how high you want the wheel crib to be off the ground. So in this case, again, we're doing 12 inches and width-wise, we're doing 10 inches. Determine if you wanna be able to fit your jack stands on top of them like I did here. Um, that's something you can figure out during planning. So then, determine how long you need them to be. Uh, 14 inches works fine for both the front and rear for my car. Um, it doesn't move or wanna wheel off of them, but one way to sort of figure this out is to take two pieces of two by four, and while the car's sitting on the ground, just put these in the front and the back of the tire and measure it and then you know maybe subtract an inch or two or just leave it the way it is. So when I did that, uh, I went with 14 inches for this car that keeps it up a little bit and gives it enough to get the tire you know, down between these two pieces here. So once you have your height, your width, and your length figured out, write all that down, figure out how many pieces you're going to need to cut and you can figure out how many two by fours you need to get. I will have a materials list 
on the website. That link will be in the description. It's just restocar.com. Okay, with that said, let's, uh, let's jump into it and let's review some of the tools you'll need and some of the materials and then we'll get this one put together. Uh, we have a miter saw right here. If you don't have a miter saw, you can use a circular saw. You can use a hand saw if you want. Um, you just need something to cut the two by fours. And of course, we'll need a tape measure. I have an impact driver. If you've never used an impact driver, uh, you need to try one out because if you're still driving screws with a drill gun, um, man, I, I don't know. Uh, when, I, when I first started using one of these, uh, when I was doing some home renovation projects, uh, it, was a, it was a game changer. I mean, you can get these screws in no problem anymore. You don't round the heads off, even if you're using Phillips. You'll need a drill gun for uh, drilling pilot holes, um, basically pre-drilling the ends of the board so that they don't split. And of course, you'll need screws to put this together. Um, these are overkill, these GRKs. Uh, again, another product, if, you've, if you're doing any kind of home renovation or anything, GRKs are amazing. Um, I use these basically all the time now um, instead of nails and, and all that. So um, for any kind of home, home renovation sort of things. Uh, but th these are definitely overkill for, for this project. I rec I'd, I'd recommend like deck screws or something similar. So I used two screws per end, one here and here, and that's just so the, the wheel crib doesn't rack in any way, right? It keeps it nice and square. Um, other than that, you might need a square just to kind of get the first couple uh, layers of the wheel crib going. Okay guys, so for this wheel crib, we need 10 pieces that are 10 inches long. This is for one wheel crib. So we need 10 pieces that are 10 inches long because that's our width. And you wanna start the first layer with your width and then you end with the same with your width. So, and then we need eight pieces that are 14 inches long for our length. We're going to do all of our cutting first. Again, we're only making one wheel crib in this video. Um, I've already made four that I, I showed you earlier. So this is again, just to show you guys how to do this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, mark this off and cut 10 pieces that are 10 inches long and eight pieces that are 14 inches long. All right guys, so there's uh, a number of ways to cut this up, measure it up, all that stuff. Um, I will say if you, if you take your tape and you go down the board like so. So we'll start with this piece here. Um, if you take your tape, and you go down and you mark off, you know, 14, 28, et cetera. Uh, you have to account for the, the width of the blade. Um, usually they're, you know, it's about an eighth of an inch. Um, so what I like to do, and it takes a little longer, um, is I, I cut my first two pieces. So the first one would be the 14 inch piece and the other one would be the 10 inch piece. And then I use those to just mark the rest as I go. Um, another great option, even better than that, would be to set up a jig so that you know that all your pieces are the same width. Um, if you were doing all four, that might be a good idea. Uh, it would be a lot faster to just put that jig together and then just keep uh, sawing away. All right, got a pencil. So first two pieces uh, will be, again, 14 and 10. So measure out 14. And we'll cut that piece. And I also like to have a square to, to measure these out. Um, make sure your ends, if you're using scrap lumber, if you're using scrap lumber like I am, make sure your ends square first before you start anything. So um, mine, mine looks pretty good. So again, first one's gonna be 14 and mark that out. And then we'll cut that. Need eye protection. And you may want ear protection as well, but these, if you're using a miter saw, sometimes these things just throw things everywhere. It's a good idea to get these on. So, um, all right, now when you, when you cut this first one, make sure you don't cut past the line. Again, taking your blade length. And again, it's not like this is, you know, if these are off a little bit, it's not gonna be a big deal. So I'm just, I get pretty crazy about stuff sometimes. Um, so get it, get it lined up, make the cut. Double check your measurement. 
we will use this one. So I'm gonna mark it as 14 so I don't forget and um, T for template or whatever anyway. Um, and now I'm gonna cut one at 10. So mark it at 10. Our line, mark it. Again, cut to the line, not past the line. Double check. Make sure you got 10 because you don't want to make all your cuts and find out they're not the right size. So anyway, these are the two. So again, mark it, 10, T. Check to see that, 10, T, 14. So I need, of the 10s, I need 10 of these total. So I'm going to make nine more. And I need eight 14s, so seven more. Instead of watching me cut all this, I'll set up the camera. We'll speed through this and uh, get going. All right, so now we have everything cut. Again, we got eight of the pieces that are 14 inches long that define the length of the uh, wheel crib. And we have 10, 10 of the pieces that are gonna define the width of the wheel crib. And again, you start with the width as the first layer and you end with it as the last layer. Let me show you what I mean. So again, you can see here that this would be your width. So these are the pieces that we made 10 of and you start this way and you end this way. And then these are your length pieces, the pieces that are 14 inches long. Start laying this out. So set these over here for now. This will be the second layer. So the first one is gonna be our width, which are gonna be the 10 inch pieces. So if we're lining them up with this car, these go on the bottom. like this okay so we start like that and your square is going to come in handy if you have one like this to sort of um, just set these on there and get them going and then um, really it's it's not even necessary because if all of these ends are square this should just work out to be good so this you start like this put these pieces on get them lined up as best you can. And this is where you start pre-drilling and screwing it together. I'm gonna to show you the screw pattern I used on the ones on my car. Uh, you can try different things or use less screws, you know, maybe one screw in construction adhesive um, or wood glue or something, or maybe even try nails, um, you know, something a little cheaper. Uh, but basically, you know, with my method, you're gonna use, you're going to use about 200, I think it's 264 screws. Um, this is, this box here, I think is five pound box. You know, you can see that this one comes with 300. So these GRKs, they actually count them out. I don't think they go by weight. Screwing them in, I alternate, but I go diagonal. So on this row, I put a screw here and here. And again, pre-drill, pre-drill, then screw. And then on the next one, I go this way and just keep alternating. So then on the one on top, so throw another one on, boom, boom, good. So that's the pattern I'm gonna use the whole way up. And it's, you know, again, if these are all cut to the same length, basically um, making sure the, the edges are flat together, aligned, or aligned properly, and these are aligned properly, you really shouldn't need the square for anything. Um, just keep going up and doing that. And again, um, you know, if you make them smaller, it's not going to be a big deal at all. So this is just an eighth inch drill bit in our standard drill.
All right, guys, so there you have it. This is a wheel crib. And, you know, now you just got to do this three more times and you'll have four for your car. Um, let me show you how you throw a jack stand on there. So this, this is, uh, again, 14 inches long. Um, jack stand fits perfectly in there. Uh, if you wanted to stack these, let's say you wanted to make this half the size and then make them stackable. What you would do is on this one, let's say you had another one that was 14, you would take something like this to fit this gap here and you would screw it to the bottom of it. So imagine this is your 14 inch piece, underneath you had a piece, then you could stack these things and keep them from moving side to side. I mean, you probably don't even need that, but you know, so um, that's it. If you got any comments, throw them down below. Uh, if you've got any other ideas or ways to make this cheaper, um, I'm sure everybody would like to hear it. And until next time, see ya.